Hey guys, it's Michael Mechanical, making a bit of an update video today. I've been sick for about a week or two or whatever you call it. And, well, I've been trying to clean up a little bit, so there's still a little bit of stuff on the floor here. I have my chair, so it looks a little bit messy even though there's chairs out. Um, I've gotten some rulers and stuff, so I put a ruler on my lathe, ready for when I put the cover, the back plate back on which isn't going to happen until the uh, motor is replaced. I've packed away my table, and I have my Creality printer out, and I have a scale in here, which is something else. Um, I've got a total of three of these lights here up now. So I've got the one and the two, and I don't have a third. Sorry, I made a mistake. My brain was just thinking about that one there. So I have three lights up in the shed currently. Uh, we're planning on sometime soon working on the 4056 for dad's car because uh, we, we want to get it out of here. I want this one done so I can bring the fair lane back in and put the fair lane back where it's supposed to be, which is here on the ground in the shed safely. Uh, we're expecting to have the sheets for the shed ordered, which that hole in the shed is leaking water in. I've had to leave this open because um, I was going to pack this away, but I can't because it was wet. And there was water in here, so I need to let it air. I don't think there's any water in there now, but I could just wait and just be certain that there isn't any water in there. Ah, oh, there's still some water in there, like right there. So I need to let it dry. Once it's dried, then, um, yeah, it'll be all good. So I've been organising the shed in such a way that I have a bit more workspace room. Now, I've pushed all the boxes of stored under here for now, back there. <clears throat> And I've put some boxes of tools and stuff and such here. This one might end up actually going. I don't know when and if it will, but whatever. And then I have some stuff here. I need a bigger one of these boxes for the Morse Taper 2 drills. Or I make up a holder for the Morse Taper 2 drills to go somewhere suitable. Like currently the only spot that I can think of is like doing something similar to these sockets. But on the side of the wall like that. If we put up a, a specialised wall like this one but do a bit more thorough work than just this ridiculous setup then we should be okay ideally it would have been better if this was a pegboard but the pegboard is expensive delicate <clears throat> not sure but what i was thinking was if i can get my printers running correctly in the way i want them or even better build a large form factor printer that can print a lot of shit um the idea is you have it set up so it can make a part that you can screw to the wall those specific materials that I'm using now are not suitable for this whatsoever in the long term. Short term, yeah, you can get away with it. Hence, <clears throat> when you look at these boxes, these are out of a material which will degrade over time, which is not ideal. Whereas these ones are probably similar, but I wouldn't be able to tell you or know. Except um, these materials will degrade over time and it wouldn't be good. It's the sun that will kill them. So any of them, these boxes, any of these materials that are white, like these ones here are white and those ones are silver and black. The white one will turn a yellow colour and that will determine that it's pretty much half-life is over, it's brittle, it's no good. And that's from exposure to UV radiation, which will do that to it. <coughs> Excuse me. So the table is now away. We're waiting on a few bits and pieces for this printer to try and get this one running again because we think there's a fault with the silent board. The printer's also intermittently, this motor here, keeps stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Don't know if that's something to do with it, but we do know that the board is faulty. So we're going to start with the thing that we know is a problem and work our way from there. And once, you know, I'm going to change my firmware because firmware that I've got on there is a bit dodgy anyway and maybe better firmware will resolve some of the problems i'm going to have to remember all of the settings and this is a really a practice thing get all the settings off of this one know what the step count is for this um, stepper motor here and make sure everything is calibrated correctly so when i move to a new firmware a new silent board that it will all run like normal and as it should i have to make sure this is all performing well the next time that board breaks down or something goes wrong with any of those boards or any of the parts fault, I am literally changing my strategy. I will not be sticking with like the stock sort of brand Creality because it's giving me too many headaches. I will only keep the Creality so long as it's stable and there's nothing wrong with it. So, um, because there's just too much things you have to do to work on those sort of printers. 
Now, same thing with this. If something goes wrong with this, I'm literally going to do the exact same thing. And what I mean by the same sort of thing is that this printer here has got a lot of things you need to do to work on it, like to get at the silent board, which is in here. The lots of work to do with like the um, the chip, the way you've got to access the board, the way you've got to interact with it to give it uh, feedback for like, I want this part printed, that print printed, that, 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 you know, the work you have to do to get it to automate the task instead of, oh, I have to now, instead of being able to get the file and send it straight to the printer to tell it print now, pretty much, you have to literally go, okay, put on an SD card, take SD card to printer, go on printer, set to print this part, and then boom, then it does it. It's just too many extra steps, and it's like a few hundred meters away every time you want to cycle a new part. So <clears throat> I'm going to be bringing the setup closer eventually, but because of the... <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I hate being sick. I apologize to everyone else that gets sick. It's been uh, 11, 12 days now that I've been sick for, but it's clearing up. Now, another thing I'm gonna be doing as soon as I can as well is this drill press here. I will be getting this um, set up to run again and I'll be doing it on a semi-permanent basis on the greatest distances away and set it up so that I can just utilize it to the maximum, I guess, that I can potentially use it to. Similar sort of setup to this one, but this one you can wind up and down. It has some adjustability in the verticality to it, whereas that one has absolutely nothing at the moment. And um, so depending on how it works, I will find a way to make it work. Um, and that might mean I'll have a nut on the top and a bolt in the middle and then what happens is you wind it up and down based on that and that will bring it up or down sort of similar to this one setup but this one just doesn't have the range to do it which I think depending on how it works I'm not sure exactly how this one works but the screw will feed this up and down anyway on this I don't know how what that would look like because it literally needs to push it down and the draw bar would be so long for that. It'd probably be ideal to have a wind down the base and then winding it up and down somehow with some gears and stuff. So it's going to be an interesting, complicated process. It's also convoluted to make it work. Um, but there's other things I could do too, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. It, it's about finding the best strategy to use that drill press because it's not really well designed it's just set up for specific tasks otherwise that drill press is going to go if we don't do nothing with it so the smart ass thing i'm going to plan on doing with this drill press crazily enough i'm going to get this to run at the same insane speeds that this thing can run at pretty much or try to get it to run at those sort of speeds but modify it to be able to handle those kind of speeds because it does not have the bearing infrastructure to do it it only has the thrust bearings to handle you know, in and out loads. So taking that into the equation, the idea would be you would have some bars here that would lock up a certain attachment that goes here, and it would be designed in such a way with such rigidity that it'd be like a, another part that goes against this one that can slide in and out in one hand. In the other hand, this will drive a different set of gears and motors that will be able to run at ridiculously high speeds and throw the speed up from like a stupid low number and go like a 10 to one sort of figure. So for every one turn of this will be 10 turns of that. So 4,000 RPM multiplied by 10 is 40,000 RPM. That is the way I look at it. <clears throat> And then you have the adjustability up top and then the bottom is just like a 10 to 1 sort of conversion um, set that you can get the insane speeds but it'll be only limited only ever limited to the speeds that this one could run at and it will have to have a certain level of rigidity and then it's not going to move when you do the task <clears throat> so there is a lot of engineering that has to go into making the special tool that goes on there to you know, take the infrastructure up and <clears throat> pump something out a lot. But it's mostly going to be for the rigidity, stiffness. It's not going to be for the um, 
a direct drive sort of thing. I don't think I'm going to try and convert it to direct drive where this thing can run at 40,000 RPM. I'd make it that the tool part handler can do it because if that breaks, then the rest of the drill can still keep running. I have some ideas on how I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to push any buttons yet. It also means I'm going to have to get a chuck to suit something like that. Anyway, guys, I'm Uncle Mechanical. I know it hasn't been much space, you know, much of a change. This table is almost clear. Um, that rack is almost full again. The fact that I have a whole bunch of stuff going on here as well isn't helpful. I don't know when or how I'm going to deal with these problems. I still have a lot of organising things to figure out, and it's so, so very hard. I almost feel like taking this printer and packing it away again. I also feel like getting rid of the printer, starting from scratch, reorganizing the shed, and then when I've made the room, reorganize to acquire new equipment again and start from the ground up. It's just so much simpler to have nothing and build the infrastructure for the specifics rather than having a whole bunch of random shit for random things going on. We don't have a lot of random randoms, but you get the idea. I can't do nothing with the lathe because it is a random item that is a random phase that cannot be run. And once it is set up, then it can do tasks. Question is, what the hell are you gonna do with it? Well, for one, the most important thing to know that this machine can make just about any part. You've got all the axes required to make so many different kind of components. So it is possible to use that lathe to make any part. I mean, there's gonna be size restrictions, obviously, but it should be capable of doing anything I ask it to do. Anyway, Michael Mechanical is going to let you go. Thank you very much for watching. Michael Mechanical out.